simple woman. If a story has themes such as good and bad, I'm reading it. Hola. You guys know that I'm always interested in psychological stories that deal with moral themes and such. And today I got another such manga to talk about. It is called Nare no Hate no Bokura and it's by Utsumi Yae. It started serializing in 2020 and I believe there are currently five volumes out. I don't know how much of it is released in English though. The author is also known for Honegaksaru Made, so if you've read that, then maybe you're interested in their new work. And yeah, and if you've read Honegaksaru Made, then you probably know that the author likes more darker stories, so let's talk about Nare no Hate. The first thing we see is two teenagers where one is pointing the gun at the other while the other is asking him if friendship isn't a wonderful thing. Now let me tell you that the next thing I'm about to tell you is not a spoiler from my side. The manga literally spoils the ending on like page two. So Anyways, we learn that there's been a mass murder at an elementary school, which was instigated by a former student called Mikio, and he's now 16 years old. Many people died, including Mikio himself. So this story isn't so much about the outcome, it's about what led to it. We're then introduced to our first protagonist, a boy called Nizu. He's studying with his girlfriend and they're talking about the reunion that is upcoming from their elementary school class. And he went to elementary school with Mikio, the guy we talked about before. Well, Mikio is the one who invited everyone and put this whole thing together. And apparently he made that year in elementary school amazing for everybody. Everybody loved him. Like the class was really close and they all had such an amazing time together. Everybody just got along thanks to Mikio. So putting together this whole reunion thing seems just like something he'd do. And not just for an evening either. He organized for everybody to sleep over for two nights. The day arrives and everybody meets up at their old elementary school. People are excited to meet everybody again after such a long time. Everybody's excited, the mood is great, even their old teacher is there. And they find out that they're even sleeping at the school. So like they have this whole thing to themselves, the whole building. After catching up a little, they're wondering where Mikio is, who then jumps out of a locker to surprise them. They're shooting a movie. Izu and Mikio were apparently especially close, at least that's what the classmates say. Like they tell Nezu that Mikio always treated him like something special. Anyways, they're wondering about another classmate who they can't seem to spot. But Mikio then says, of course he's here, but they can't seem to find him anywhere. He then tells them that he's inside this box. People are really confused, but they figure, oh, yet another surprise, right? Like the poor guy is cramped up in this box. Ha <laughs> ha, so funny. <laughs> well, surprise them, he did. They open the box and they find the classmate's body chopped up inside of it. Chaos ensues and they try to run outside to call the police. Mikio warns them that he's placed traps all over the school and one kid immediately got caught in one. Mikio's also got a gun, so they're really forced to stay inside the school and do as he says. Now Mikio tells them about his plan and he's like, you know how when murders happen, the police and the media are always like, well, you know, the perpetrator was a hikikomori or abused or something like that. And so he asks everyone, why do you think that is? And Nizu says that it's to put people at ease because then they can go like, oh, well, my kid is not a hikikomori, so we'll be fine. And well, Mikio believes that these are oftentimes excuses, so people don't think that actual evil exists in the world. And now what Mikio is trying to do here is to test how good everybody is. And since they had this great time and everybody loved each other so much, apparently he felt that they'd be the perfect, you know, test subject. He wants to do that by playing a bunch of mind games basically to test everybody's good nature and obviously the stakes are high it's about life and death 
And if everybody survives, he's gonna turn himself in. And so this is where everything begins. This one kind of reminds me of Jujika no Rokunin, which I also did a video on. I mean, the story itself isn't really similar to Jujika, but it's also kind of over the top and unrealistic. Like the way it escalates is crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind. It's still entertaining, but still. It's not... <sighs> It's not really a good psychological story. Like it tries to be a little philosophical with, you know, mentioning these greater themes. Like how far can you go until you lose your humanity and stuff like that. But even in the first game, and I won't spoil it here, the key, the winning wasn't even being good. It was just about being logical and rational. Like, you could have been the biggest opportunist of all time, or everyone could have been, and they could have won this easily. Easily. Since I don't want to spoil it, I can't go into it too much, but if you read it, you'll know what I mean. So, it wasn't even, it wasn't even testing how good you are. He basically tested if you were an idiot or not. But this manga, rather than, you know, showing us a balanced view, trying to go deeper into the psychology of humans, it just, I, I feel like it's trying to, to make it seem like people are just waiting for an opportunity to kill each other or take revenge or whatever. And that idea is a little too out there in my opinion. And they're still teenagers, right? Which means they're still children. But holding a grudge against somebody from when they bullied you when they were like 12, like, come on. A lot of times people regret having bullied somebody when they're much older. Oftentimes teenagers can't even, you know, reflect on the shit they did when they were kids. But, you know, the, the older you get, the more you start reflecting on all of that. So, you know, waiting five years and then, you know, wanting to take revenge on them is just... It seems, it seems immature rather than downright evil, you know? So it doesn't really prove anything to me, at least. I mean, it's been a while since I was a teenager, so if you are one, tell me if that's something you do. <laughs> and if it is, please seek help. I mean, maybe I believe too much in humanity, which is rich, because I lose faith in it like four times a day. But still, I do think that the manga portrays humans as even more rotten than they actually are. Like, of course, maybe you have vengeful thoughts or whatever, but actually going so far as to let another person die, it's... They must have done something extremely horrible and not regret it for that to happen. Anyways, Nezu seems to be really decent and yet everybody's kind of looking down on him for acting like a hero. Maybe something's wrong with me for thinking that, but I thought he was normal. Maybe I'm wrong. I only read a little more than the first volume, so we'll see. If you've read more, then you can share your thoughts on the rest of the story as well. I'm gonna catch up soon anyway, so don't be scared to spoiler or anything. Anyways, Mikio also reminds me a little bit of Kyo from Jujika, you know, who wants to kill people and how special that would make him. And Mikio also thinks that he has like a special reason for this experiment or like a higher reason, but does he really? I'm not sure if you can test how good somebody is by manipulating everything like that. Fine, I'm not sure what his true motive is, if it's really only that or if he's got something else planned and what his relationship is with Nezu, because it's weird. But I'm sure all of this will be revealed as we read on. What I really like about it though is that it's very entertaining. Like I really want to know what happens next and like who's gonna die next and why. And also how Mikio is gonna judge everybody and why. Maybe it's gonna go deeper. I don't know yet. And I also like the small comedic scenes here and there. It makes everything more absurd, which is also reminiscent of Jujika. I don't know. If you've read both, tell me what you think. The art is also pretty good. And this is also another manga where the cover drew me in. 
And his style is a mix of like kind of sketchy, you know, and very clean. And it has a good balance of that, in my opinion. The character design is also pretty good. They all look very distinct. All in all, I really like it, to be honest. Like, I know it seems that I've been a little ranty in this video, but I actually really enjoy reading it. I just don't think that it's like super good or very deep or very philosophical. I think it tries to be and I think it scratches the surface. But still, I see it the way I see Judica. It tries to be something, but it ends up being completely absurd. But still, it's super fun instead. Like, it's just fun to read in the end. Like, it doesn't disturb me at all. It's just, it's silly, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, it's not very deep, but it's interesting enough for me. I also really wanna know what's so special about Nizu. I'll definitely keep reading it. And I really hope that I got some of you interested in checking it out at least. And if you do, please let me know what you think about it. But that is all for this week. I hope everybody has a good day and I'll see you next week, hopefully. Unless I die in the heat. Bye-bye.